Jesus is alive, if he has risen from the dead, which we gather here to believe, that means our lives are no longer the same. Jesus is risen, and our lives are changed forever. We see how it changes the lives of those who witness the resurrection. Look in the gospel, right? They see how the apostles and Mary Magdalene, everyone, they, they look and then see the empty tomb. Fascinating as a side point, how they notice the burial cloths, and it's a very peculiar detail to them. You know, we still have that cloth today. You may know it's the Shroud of Turin. Awesome scientists have done great studies on it. They took a photograph, 1858. The negative of it shows a great figure of a person with the scourgings, the markings of, of again, Roman scourging, shows coins of Pontius Pilate on the, the eyes, which are normally placed, and a corpse, etc. And so we still have that evidence today. Nonetheless, when they look into the empty tomb, they see the buried cloths off to the side. They notice, right, Jesus isn't there. The Gospels say they came to believe. And we can feel the effects today of, that, of this event, of their belief. In a way, all of us are gathered here because of it. If Jesus never rose from the dead, there's no point of us being here. And it changed the apostles' lives because from there, they devoted their whole life to it, to spreading this good news that the Lord is risen, passed down to the ages, leading to us being here. But again, because Christianity is true, because of the resurrection, we're here. There's a quote by C.S. Lewis that says this, Christianity, if false, is of no importance. And if true, of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. Let me say it again. If Christianity is false, it's no important. If it is true, if he is risen, it is of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. And so we hear, right, that what does that look like? It means like when something is of immense importance, infinite importance, we devote our whole life to it, our whole energies. We hear in our, in our first reading, our second reading, we hear from St. Paul, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. Because of the resurrection, it's of infinite importance. That means then why we live is for heaven. We live now for heaven. Our whole life is meant to be directed towards that and not just think, seeking that of the earth. Now, what does that look like for us? I'll tell you, seeking heaven above all, devoting our whole life to it, doesn't necessarily mean we have to live as a priest or live like a religious nun or a cloistered nun. Meaning, like, all our days in prayer. I know as a priest, right, go to hospital calls, funerals, weddings. I'm at the church, all the Sunday masses, right? Uh, cloistered nun, right? She's, uh, she's in, uh, in the convent, soaking her day for prayer in prayer. Uh, right, the whole day is spent there, right, praying for the world. But for us, right, again, for us, different call state of life, devoting our life as heaven doesn't mean we have to live in that way. Because as you and I know, we have different responsibilities living in the world. We have to provide for our family, right, uh, uh, with our jobs, provide for our kids. Just the other week, I was staying with my sister at her house, right, I have two little ones, two nephews. I have a four-year-old, one-year-old, right? They, they need a lot of care and attention. You remember one time, they, they apologized. It's like, sorry, you know, my, like, sorry, like, if you were kept up at night because one of them was crying all night. And I'm a deep sleeper, so I said, no worries, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> right, but I know that for us, uh, for young families, whatever we are seeing in life, we can't live the way as a cloistered nun and a priest does. And the good things for us is that living for heaven doesn't mean that we have to do all of that. Certainly, we have to have prayer in our life. God has to be in our life. But I think it's a good news for us that, that God is a part of a life we need discipline Right? But also means of discipline to order our life, to devote to our relationships, to our family, to faith. God has to be a part of our life. But what's also true is that even if God is a part of our life, 
We make sure we go to Sunday Mass, right? We do some prayer. It mean, doesn't necessarily mean that we're living our life all for God. Again, to live all for God doesn't mean God has to, our day has to be stuffed with all sorts of church events. But just because God is a part of our life, it also means that, doesn't mean that all our life is lived for Him. That we're seeking after heaven. I think we remember just, well, just four years ago that uh, the pandemic started and all of this was online, right? Church was uh, canceled, right, in a way. Masses were uh, live streamed. And for some of us, we had different reactions. Some of us were angry. Some of us were grieving that we were missing the Eucharist. Others maybe were relieved. Again, Mass was a part of our life, but then there was a relief when Mass was canceled. And there could be many reasons why that relief was present, but it could be that God was a part of our life, but He wasn't the purpose for our life. Again, God was a part of our life, but it wasn't the reason why we were living. We weren't living for heaven. Right? And so, again, God, we're meant to live for heaven, but just because He's a part of us doesn't mean we're living all for Him. So what, what does it look like then for us in our different stages of life to live all for Jesus, seek after him? An easy answer to that question is to look at Jesus himself, who we model our lives after. Again, taking the name of Christian, we have the name of Christ in our name. We live as Jesus does. And so another way to ask the question then is, what did Jesus desire? What did he seek all his life? What was driving him to endure the cross, to die for us? What was driving him to rise from the dead? The answer we see all throughout scripture. The answer we hear Jesus himself give. That is, Jesus lived out of relationship with the Father and desired nothing more but to do the Father's will. Everything he did in life, he did because he saw the Father doing it. And so Jesus did all of this for us, rose from the dead, died for us out of love for us. Yes, but we also know, and we're familiar with this, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Jesus also came here, did what he did for us, because it was also the Father's will. Because the Father loved us. Everything Jesus did, every aspect and part of his life, was to do his Father's will. That means for us to live as if Christianity was of infinite importance and not just moderately important, right? To seek after heaven means that no matter what we're doing in every aspect of our life, we're seeking the Father's will. That even if we know our work or taking our kids or eating, going out, having fun, that our hearts is being influenced by God's love, influenced by doing the Father's will. Let's take a couple examples. Let's look at our work life and our job. One, we live in it seeking the Father's will by one, just looking at what kind of job we have. We know that there are some ways of earning money out there that's exploiting human beings, right? We're creating the image of likeness of God. There's a dignity of the human person. You know, there are things we could be doing that could exploiting others for our own pleasure, right? And so we know automatically that's not living according to the Father's will. Also see ways in which there can be injustices, depriving the worker of his wage, right? Not being fair in our dealings, etc. And so we could just look at our kind of job and see, is it according to the Father's will? But okay, say that's okay, and we're in it, right? And we know we're, we're working, trying to make money, make a lot of money to provide for ourselves. In it, we could see that one thing God's word, God always encourages, consoles, builds up. So then in our, in our work, in our, in our, with our coworkers, are we a source of encouragement? Are we a source of building the person up, seeing how they're gifted, right? Mentoring them, helping them grow. Are we the opposite? Do we gossip? Do we tear them down, right? A source of disunity, seeking only our own selfish pleasures or selfish will. Right? Therein, um, doing the opposite, loving as God does, we begin to live out the Father's will in that aspect of our life. Maybe look at, again, like taking care of our kids. Um, if we look at there and see, look at the big picture, am I open to the Father's will for their lives? One example, 
am I okay if God calls one of my sons to be a priest? One of my daughters to be a sister or devote her life to Christ? Or am I putting, a projecting, putting my plan up for them, my hopes, my desires for them over God's? That's one way. Another one, what are we encouraging them to seek out? Right? Are, we seeking, are we encouraging them to seek out the God's kingdom to live out for him or for something else? Another thing is, are we paying enough attention to them? Are we loving them? Are we being encouraging with our challenges and our words? Right? Are we, in other words, acting for their good. All these different things, acting for the love of God. Again, that's how we can live out the will of God even in that aspect as well. And so in all of these things, we can take all of us, our leisure, are we partnering with God? Are we all of these things, all of our lives, aspects of our life, again, seeking the will of God in all those things? Now, it could be difficult to know. You may say, well, Father, I don't know what the will of God is all the time. It's be difficult in each circumstance. Totally get it. Right? And so that's why we start with looking at where it's clearly revealed. The scriptures, the catechism, right, where the church is teaching. All those we grab, to, uh, all those are principles by which we base our decisions in daily life. To help guide us to make the right decisions. But also, we need to spend time in prayer with our Lord. We want to know the Father's will. We want to know his heart. We have to be able to be communicating with him heart to heart. Spend time with him in prayer. But also know too that because the tomb is empty, Jesus is risen. He is in heaven, but he's also in you and I. He lives in us. And so whenever we need his heart, whenever we need even the desire to do his, the Father's will, we can make a prayer. And maybe make this, maybe have this be a daily habit. Jesus, help me to desire what you desire. Jesus, help me, give me the grace to seek after what you seek. Help me to live out the Father's will in every part of my life. Right? Give me your love for this person, etc. That we can make part of our daily life. So that in all things, we can live for heaven. And no longer seeking just for the things 